Welcome to the Deep Sky Diary podcast, your guide to photograph the night. This is the first episode where I can finally talk about some actual pieces of equipment for astrophotography. This episode will be directed to beginners who just got their first setup and want to improve their images. Sometimes small changes can make the difference. Astrophotography would be much harder without these, if not totally impossible. Today let's talk about filters. I will introduce one of the two types of astronomical filters and explain how they work. In the next episode I will also talk about how to attach them to the optical train and some small issues that can creep up while using them. A filter is a piece of glass that is coated with many different layers of coatings to affect the light that is passing through. In astrophotography filters are used to block certain parts of the spectrum of light, certain colors if you like, to achieve different outcomes. Most of the time they are used to mitigate light pollution. In university I learned how these layers are first calculated and then applied. It's a really interesting process, but definitely out of the scope for this episode. But if you want to keep one takeaway, think about this. A complex filter can have up to 100 layers of different coatings applied to its surface to get the desired properties. Some of these layers are only a couple of nanometers thick and very fragile. The paint on your car is about 1000 times thicker. So next time you polish your car with a microfiber cloth and your filters with a shirt sleeve, reconsider your priorities. In our images we want detail. We want great colors and we want sharp and crisp stars. Filters can't help you with poor focus, even though some seemingly can. But they can definitely help with the color and detail. Boiling it down, we use filters to achieve greater contrast. In this context I define contrast as a difference in brightness between two elements we compare. You can easily spot a tiny galaxy in an image if it's brighter than the surrounding sky. Good contrast between the bright galaxy and dark background. But now let's talk about the different kinds of filters. I will only mention filters used for deep sky astrophotography since I have no experience when it comes to planetary or solar photography. Those filters are weird anyway. All filters used in deep sky astrophotography can be thrown into one of two categories, broadband and narrowband. A broadband filter allows most of the light to reach the camera while blocking smaller portions of the spectrum. These unwanted portions are most of the time light pollution, for example the sodium emission line, for sodium lamps are still widespread in street lights. Cut away light made by humans, pass light made by the universe. Simple. Sadly not that simple. But let's talk about the different names of broadband filters first. Broadband light pollution filters can have many names. CLS, City Light Suppression, UHC, Ultra High Contrast, LPS, Light Pollution Suppression, Clear Sky Filter, Sky Glow Filter, you name it. All of those can be categorized as block most of the unwanted light while allowing most of the wanted light. The problem is that every filter will always reduce the color in your astronomical objects. A light pollution filter will always cut down on the broadband color spectrum of galaxies and reduce the color of stars, which come in mostly red, blue and yellow. The more you cut away light pollution, the more your colors will fade away. If you are a beginner and you want to get your first filter, consider the following criteria. Do you live in a light polluted area? And do you have a color or monochrome camera? Broadband light pollution filters allow many colors to seep through to the camera. So a color camera is definitely a good choice. Use entry level light pollution filters to cut some of the unwanted light and increase the contrast between your object and the background. These entry level filters cost about $150 and carry names like CLS and LPS. I have used a small number of different light pollution filters throughout my career. I could of course recommend some brands, but I have a better idea. Head over to Astrobin 
and filter all of the Earth's astro images for filters you want to know more about. You can see how they perform, what type of equipment was used alongside, and most importantly, how light polluted the acquisition location was. In the next episode, I will introduce the second type of astronomical filters, known as narrowband filters. I want to keep these episodes short and to the point, but I can already see myself trailing off into many different directions. If you have any questions about filters or about astrophotography in general, leave them in the comments and I can answer them in future episodes of the Deep Sky Diary. Until then, clear skies and may the night be with us. It has to be. For the darker the night, the brighter the stars. <laughs>